It could be that BSA's biggest competitor going forward into 2024 and 2025 is actually not Royal Enfield, but it's more likely to be someone like the British built electric motorcycle company Maving. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about BSA's pivot to electric motorcycles and it's well underway. So if you didn't know about this, this video might actually be quite interesting to you. Mahindra published an annual report just saying that there's a development project for an electric motorcycle production facility actually based here in the UK. So if you remember way back when, when the Gold Star was launched in 2021, BSA said they were bringing manufacturing back to the UK, which we all thought was great. But it could be that this manufacturing is actually for low volume niche electric BSAs and not the kind of petrol powered manufacturing that happened in years gone by. Obviously it costs a lot of money to set up a new manufacturing facility, especially in a market like the UK where labour costs are nice and high. They've got some uh, sources or potential sources of revenue to set up this project. So number one would probably be Mahindra itself, obviously a huge company. Mahindra's profits are actually up. 20% year on year, both in revenue and actual operating profit, which is really, really impressive for a company as big as Mahindra. Those revenues are driven by the farm and agricultural machinery sales, but also by the SUVs that serve the Indian home market. Obviously, 1.1 billion people, whatever it is in India, huge potential market of customers, aspiring middle class, etc. Very, very good time to ask for new initiatives when everything's going well in the company. People are happy, commissions are up, which is a good time, isn't it? Now, the other source of potential income is actually the UK government. So UK government has been funding advanced vehicle technologies for quite some time. When you see advanced vehicle or cutting edge technology, that basically is a byword for EV. They're not gonna be funding research into any ICE applications. So petrol is out, battery powered is in, basically. Now, the government has announced £73 million of additional funding on the 4th of March 2024 towards these kind of uh, battery powered vehicles. £36 million of that actually gets funneled through a conglomerate called the Advanced Propulsion Centre UK, which is basically a business hub that brings together private enterprise and academics like the University of Warwick to develop new propulsion systems for electric vehicles bring prototypes to market and also battery power systems, control systems, um, you name it, if it's electric, this company is developing it. So on their wrap sheet, they've brought to market the Maving RM1S electric motorcycle. So remember this is the RM1 that Maving brought to market, but then they got all the feedback that it was too slow, 45 miles an hour wasn't enough, and so they have now released due in July, I should say, it's available to pre-order, but due in July, a RM1S that goes 65 miles an hour and is said to be motorway capable. Same bike, just they've replaced the hub motor on the rear there, so it's got more power and you can cruise at 65 miles an hour. Now, that project seems to be successful and it's come through funding to upgrade the propulsion system by the Advanced Propulsion Centre UK. They've also funded the white emergency responder electric hybrid motorcycle concept bike which is basically a project to bring electric hybrid vehicles to first responders so they can get out into the emergency situation deal with it without polluting the planet basically anything that is sponsored by this advanced propulsion center basically comes under the government's drive of transportation decarbonization so it's all electric stuff as i mentioned before so if we head over to the Advanced Propulsion Centre website and we look at funded projects or collaborative R&D competitions, we've got BSA Company Limited, the electric BSA project. So BSA are the kind of headliner, a true modern retro motorcycle powered by a battery powered electric motor. This middleweight retro roadster will target the mid performance segment and have wide market appeal. So as it's a roadster, we can take it that it'll probably have mid foot peg controls, mid position controls, um, but it has the best of both worlds, modern retro design, which obviously BSA, that's almost perfectly aligned with that their type of motorcycle, rides on innovative and green technology. BSA wants to contemporize the classic through this motorcycle. So this is quite interesting because they're bringing something into the market that doesn't really exist. Okay, you've got the Maving, but it's more like a push bike with a battery pack. There's not really a modern classic 
like, a, like an electric interceptor or an electric Z650 RS um, or an electric motor Gutsy. That doesn't really exist. So if, maybe, if um, BSA can get this prototype to market, they'll have a first mover advantage. It might actually be successful. But let's read on. Funding received for this project will fast forward the development of a UK designed, developed and manufactured electric motorcycle. So there's, a, there's also this idea that the UK is falling behind China in battery technology and development of EVs and China will just dominate the global market and so government also wants to fund UK enterprise to sort of catch up and bridge that gap. Yeah and as you see it says putting British motorcycling back on the global automotive map. BSA obviously you can see how this project got approved, got rubber stamped. BSA was making arms for Britain back in World War I. Every one in four motorcycles was a BSA in the 50s. And it's kind of that bringing the history of Britain back, but also tying in with the net zero agenda. So you, it's almost a match made in heaven for someone to rubber stamp. So project highlights creation of a modern, retro, authentic, best-in-class electric motorcycle that is unmistakably British. Obviously, BSA is unmistakably British, isn't it? So and they're gunning there with that opening bullet point for Maving, really, because Maving are doing really well in sales. For a startup company, they've sold between 160 bikes per quarter for the last year. It's pretty good, actually, for a, a, basically a no-name brand. I mean, no one knows Maving. Depreciation on Maving is pretty harsh. So keep that in mind if you are listening to this video, thinking about investing in a BSA electric power plant uh, motorcycle. So here's some bullet points that kind of just EV and net zero speak. Green fuel, state-of-the-art technology, um, developed to get maximum efficiency out of the battery. I guess the interesting things here are a bespoke battery with a specially designed motor that creates the right retro torque with an authentic sound. That's quite interesting. So retro torque, let's think about it. We're looking at 52 newton meters for the interceptor, a little bit more for the Guzzi, uh, the V7, and the BSA Gold Stars, 55 newton meters. So they want to be in that ballpark with the torque output. Now remember that electric motors seem to favor torque output over BHP. You can have a 200 newton meter electric motor with only 80 brake horsepower. Um, the way they spin up seems to favour um, a lot of torque output. Motorcycle to be developed with advanced levels of telematics to enhance the ownership riding experience. I don't really like that part because I don't really want somebody tracking and analysing the data of my riding where I'm going and beaming data back to goodness knows where. Um, but let's see, I mean this is still very far in the future, probably 2025, so let's see how it develops. So in the consortium, you've got BSA Limited. They're obviously the headliner leading the project. University of Warwick, second participant, Warwick Manufacturing Group. And then you've got Dana T4M, TM4, sorry, which is the motor manufacturer. Microlyze, which specialize in vehicle and fleet telematics. So tracking haulage companies, for example, trying to find optimizations about where they can potentially bring drivers in, change routes, that kind of thing. It's all tracked and optimized and analyzed, probably using AI like everything else these days. You've got Vital Auto, which is bespoke, low volume, electrical component manufacturing, vehicle system manufacturing for electrics. That's kind of obvious how you bring those guys in, wire up the motor, connect that to the CAN bus and all that kind of thing. And then you've got Hypermotive, which specializes in battery technology, but also electric vehicle, electric, um, wiring and system control. So you've got two companies really with, with strong overlap and then you've got one company which is developing the motors and you've got Microlyze, the telematics. Warwick probably having some PhD students work on the project, get some cutting edge innovation there and BSA providing a healthy dose of retro. So you can see how it all comes together. Um, let's look at the engine, the power pack potential for this bike. So as a baseline, let's take the Maving RM1S, which is basically the closest modern retro electric competitor. You've got a top speed of 70 miles an hour, you've got a price of seven and a half grand, range up to 80 miles with dual batteries. That's another point, it better have removable batteries, BSA. So if you ever watch this, you know, please put, put removable batteries in this bike. Power, seven kilowatts continuous power, 10.5 kilowatts peak power. Charging time, you're looking at four hours for zero to 100. 
and then three hours for 20 to 80 percent weight 133 kilos with both batteries fitted so that's kind of good for an electric bike um, this one is good because it's actually particularly lightweight so let's move over to the motor so remember that the competitor is at 10.5 kilowatts peak power so you head on over to the Dana TM4 website and you see a list of applications. You can select motorcycles or a uh, small light vehicle and they've got a couple of engine ranges or electric motors that are positioned for this particular application, the IPM120 series and the IPM200 series. So these are kind of off the shelf components which are spec to be particularly um, efficient in mechanical output versus electrical input range increased by 25%, small shape which obviously is advantageous for a motorcycle, motor reduced in weight by up to 70%, again really useful for a motorcycle, powerful best in class thermal performance, thermal performance means don't take that electrical energy and, and transmute it into heat, you've got to transmute most of the electrical energy into kinetic energy to drive the powertrain, which should probably be belt drive as most electric bikes are. Let's look at some motor specs, Let's look at the IPM 200, and that peak power is 5 to 15 kilowatts. You can probably change the specifications, or uh, well, that's a range depending on operating conditions, perhaps. Someone who's got an electrical engineering degree can probably correct me. But the peak power there, that will put it nicely within the spec of the 10.5 kilowatts of the Maving RM1. So if you think about peak power output on electric bikes, you kind of got the up to seven, which is a one, two, five level, go up then to 14 kilowatts, and that's kind of equivalent to sort of a 650 parallel twin, about 70 horsepower, fast enough. And then as you get to the likes of zeros and the Energica, you've got 21 and 25 and even higher kilowatt outputs. And those are the kind of powers that rip your arms out of the sockets. But bear in mind, BSA didn't say that in the project overview, they said, retro levels of torque so we all, I would guess that it'll be between yeah probably 10 to 15 kilowatts power out, output the weight here is listed at 13 15 or 18 kilos depending on spec and peak torque there is 45 newton meters or 45 to 75 or 95 for the highest spec probably won't be the highest spec one probably looking at more of the 45 torque output I remember we, look, we looked at the ICE engines earlier in the video that output torque that's 45, 50, 55 newton meters. So they've got an engine ready for this motorcycle. I think the timeline for the bike is going to be 2025. I don't know if it will come before or after the proposed 350 engine, which I think will be based on the Perak, the 322 cc single. That might be developed in India alongside this UK initiative to develop the electric bike. I think it's a really good move by BSA because think about the strategy of business. You don't attack your opponent when they're strong and you're weak. You try and, you try and make grounds or fight a battle where you're strong and they're weak. So what is the point of fighting Royal Enfield in a 650 range where they've already got bikes getting churned out every six to nine months they've got an established user base a reputation for reliability a reputation for good value for money except a dealer network huge, yeah and they've got everything haven't they Royal Enfield they've also dominated the 350 space so BSA could come into that space and try and compete um, but they're not going to overturn Royal Enfield's position as the market leader they might just nibble away a little bit of market share which could be fine could be a good business strategy i think if they bring out this bike that's a modern retro electric bike and it actually does work uh, is good it's got a good range it's got all those like fine touches that the maving's actually got but it's got the iconography of bsa then i think it'll be a good bike and also there's no one else doing it so they've got this like first mover first to market advantage there's not really any other brands that have done electric. I mean, Royal Enfield teased it with an electric Himalayan prototype, but that's not even the retro range. And Sadar Falel said that there's no point of just sti sticking a battery pack in a classic 350 until he actually knows the market's there and established for it. So BSA are actually going out on a limb and thinking that the electric motorcycle market is here to stay and they're developing this bike. This bike will have to come to market 
priced sort of five to seven grand. Because I think if they bring an electric bike to market, it's sort of like four, 14 999 or something daft. It might be the best, most powerful retro bike in the world, but, but who's going to buy it? Because nobody really wants to spend big money on electric bikes. We know that. I've read all your comments. It's all right for commuting. It's all right for five grand here or there. Like people are buying lots of Mavings, but then it's 4999 for a single battery. When you sell them on, they're 3500 3, You lose loads in depreciation. So people are buying Mavings, but they are a success story. But, but I don't think they're at the higher price point. No one's buying Zeros. No one's buying Energicas. They're just too expensive. So would I buy the Maven? Uh, the, would I buy the Maven? I probably would buy the Maven if it had more range. I do like the Maven, so I'm not against battery retro vehicles. Would I buy the electric BSA? Perhaps I would actually, which is probably something that people wouldn't expect me to say. But if it looks like a Gold Star and is battery powered and has all the BSA touches, but has like improvements in range, perhaps a solid state battery, something really fancy, all this British engineering behind it. And perhaps I could be won over. But guys, let me know what you think about the electric BSA. It's happening, it's, it's funded. I mean, the project would have to fail dramatically now if they didn't at least get a prototype to market. They have first mover advantage. If battery powered bikes are here and the government wants them to be here, then, you know, maybe BSA has got an edge on Triumph and Royal Enfield. Perhaps, perhaps this, this thing does actually have legs. All right, guys, thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.